Denis and Volodya are 25 and live in St. Petersburg in Russia. They are both married to women with HIV and both are gambling with their health to start families. If government does not provide necessary services for safe pregnancy and I want to have a baby, I am not responsible because I, I almost have no choice. I know it's a lot more difficult for a man to get infected from a woman than the other way around, so I know I'm taking a risk, but the risk is justified. This is the story of a group of friends who have supported each other through addiction and infection and have found love despite HIV. Amidst the cathedrals and canals of St. Petersburg, intravenous drug use is on the rise. Russia is in the grip of an HIV epidemic and has almost one million people living with the infection. It's mostly spread by drug users sharing needles. Like many others, Zhenya started taking drugs in her early teens. I hang out in these groups, drinking and going to clubs, and decided to try drugs. I gave a syringe to my friend and said, please inject me. And after that, I didn't use anything else. I injected. Sharing needles amongst users is the norm here. And after years of injecting, Zhenya was too desperate to be deterred by the risk of infection. My friend and I were walking along. I knew she had HIV and she says, I have some drugs and I only have one syringe and I'm going to inject first, do what you like. And I said, I don't care. I took the syringe after her and I knew that I'd contract it, most probably, and I didn't care. Genius friend Masha also has HIV. I started taking drugs in 97, that is, intravenous drugs. But it wasn't until Masha went to a clinic to start a withdrawal program that she found out she was infected. I was just given a little piece of paper with a plus on it. What was it? What does it mean? I didn't understand what the plus meant at the time. But later, at the clinic, they simply refused my admission by saying that I was HIV positive. Despite having contracted HIV, they managed to pull themselves out of addiction. That evening that I came to the group, my life changed. I started to hope and gradually rebuild my life. And at a self-help group, they met each other and their future husbands. When I went to the support group, I was about 10 days without drugs. I was literally straight off the street. Zhenya had been there for two years and was doing great. I arrived at the group to see this cute boy, so I'm thinking, ooh, who's this? I like him. I thought he was cute. I'd like to get to know him. Meeting people like Zhenya at the group changed Volodya's perception of HIV. When you meet a person with HIV for the first time, you think they haven't got anything to live for anymore. They're finished. And I joined the group and saw for myself how wonderful the people there were. And Zhenya's HIV status didn't put him off. It actually made me more in awe of her. The illness doesn't stop her living her life. I was really struck by her bravery. Dennis felt the same when he met his wife, Masha. When I saw her the first time, I just thought, she must be my wife. He had this short, silly haircut. Some kind of a horrible yellow jacket with a vest over it for some reason. But I guess it was in at the time. 
At the first day, we went for a long, long walk, and we walked in the center of St. Petersburg, and we walked under the rain, you know, talking and chatting and so on. Very, very soon, we started to date. She told me that she has HIV, and the second day, we just were talking, chatting, um, and like she told me, la 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 la, like, you know, I had uh, big problems with my health. So that, that, that how I knew about the diagnosis. I didn't feel something special, like, oh, she got HIV. <laughs> no. Dennis was not into drugs, but he battled alcohol addiction in his teens. This experience learned me not to judge people and not to put uh, like labels on them. Uh, I didn't know that you can react some other way. Dennis now works for an NGO in St. Petersburg with another friend from the support group, Vladimir. The aim of the organization is to spread information about HIV treatment and campaign for better support for those battling addiction, including the introduction of methadone, which is currently prohibited in Russia. With replacement therapy, we need to start from the beginning, not just introduce it cold. We need therapy, services, working with relatives, working with people who have just got out of prison. It's also important to create the infrastructure that will work, but in our current state it's going to be a flop. But the problem is, there's no community support, not for drug users, and for HIV it's too late. Vladimir's own case is typical of many drug users. He claims to have had no education about HIV as he was growing up, or advice about the dangers of injecting. Once I was sharing a needle with my neighbor, a guy in my block, and he said, I've tested positive for HIV. Do you know if you have it? Even then, I didn't think it was possible. I thought it was done. But when I went to a rehab clinic, I got my test and was very scared because I didn't know anything. Vladimir was diagnosed eight years ago and now has to take daily medication to manage his HIV. This antiretroviral therapy is provided for free by the Russian government, although it doesn't reach many that need it. Vladimir and Dennis campaign for improved accessibility to this treatment, but believe there's still a long way to go. It's been eight years, and in my opinion, not much has changed. Money isn't being spent on prevention or providing information about the risks. The government does not provide medical assistance to HIV-infected women trying to conceive. Indeed, doctors generally refuse to artificially inseminate women with HIV who want a baby. So the only way for Masha to get pregnant is for Dennis to have unprotected sex with her and risk getting infected himself. For me it was difficult because it's about the risk, uh, it's about my health. I want to have a baby, like I, I need the, the continuation of my of myself, of my whole ancient and parents and, you know... I want to have Dennis's children because he's stable enough. He doesn't drink, he doesn't do drugs. He is special. I see how he is with kids and I like it. In fact, the risk of Dennis contracting HIV from Masha is about one in 400. Dennis feels it's a risk he's willing to take and doesn't see HIV as an immediate death sentence. I'm not trying to say that, you know, HIV is okay because each person who has HIV 
would prefer not to have it. Even if I got infected, it means that maybe approximately in 10 years, if everything is going to be very bad, I'm gonna start ARVs, something like 10 years, maybe less. Uh, and then on ARVs I can live like for 20, 30, according to last researches for 47 years. Anyhow, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Although the Russian government doesn't want to encourage women with HIV to have babies, it does provide them with free antiretroviral drugs to take during pregnancy. These help to reduce the likelihood of passing the infection to the child to just 1%. But Dennis is still risking his life to have a baby with Masha. In part two, one couple find out whether the risk was worth it. I wanted children very much. There wasn't any fear. I wasn't scared. In St. Petersburg, the levels of HIV spread by drug users sharing infected needles is on the rise. For two couples living with the consequences of their addictions, trying to start a family has been a difficult process. Dennis and wife Masha, who has HIV, first started trying to get pregnant nine months ago. Everybody's having a baby at the moment. We're the last. It's contagious. Yeah, it's a contagious illness. We are the last ones left. They have unprotected sex only on specific days of the month. But every time they do, Dennis risks becoming infected himself. It's connected with the days of the uh, women's cycle. And you know, for me, it's a dark forest. I just trust my wife. Today, they are visiting their friends, Zhenya and Volodya, who have recently had a baby. <laughs> Timothy is five months old. Although his mother, Zhenya, has HIV, she took antiretroviral medication whilst pregnant and has not passed the infection on to her son. Her husband, Volodya, was lucky not to contract HIV, although he's well aware of the risks. So Dennis seeks a little man-to-man -man advice. I wanted children very much. There wasn't any fear. I wasn't scared. Did you try it for very long? <laughs> we started trying for a month. Didn't use protection. Then we had one of those nights after a fight. It was this night of passion, of love. I mean, and... We counted the days, and I think it was then that we got pregnant. The most important fears, the biggest fears for me, were that the baby would be healthy. Yeah, so if you follow everything the doctor says, then everything will be fine. For Zhenya, she's achieved her dream, but it's not been easy. And a lot has changed since she started doing art therapy in rehab. I was lying on a sofa and I remember thinking, my God, I want to die. But when I started getting better, I went to get my tests. I believe that all these illnesses are our bodies telling us, help yourself. Despite the fact her addiction led her to become infected with HIV, she still believes she's a better person for it. I have this huge gratitude to the fact that I've had this experience. Because it taught me to be happy, live happily, to love, overcome obstacles, to set goals and achieve them, aim for something. When she met Volodya, she knew she wanted to start a family with him. There's a type of people who you meet and right away you feel warm here. And when I saw him, I felt warm. It's so wonderful remembering how it was. <laughs>
But when you're HIV positive, having a baby is not an easy decision. Xenia's mother didn't believe her daughter should have a child and hasn't yet come to visit her grandson. I think it will really help if my mum accepts that I'm ill, that it doesn't mean that she's a bad mother, that she forgives herself and accepts that I'm an ill person. The couple were sure it was the right thing for them to have a baby. The doctors said that if you do everything we tell you, take the medication at the right time, then there's a 99% chance that the baby will be healthy. I looked up the statistics, and there's a far greater chance it will be born with other defects rather than HIV. But they had to wait a terrifying six weeks to find out whether baby Timothy had HIV. It was very frightening, especially when my mum was saying it was a crime to have a baby when you have HIV because everybody supported us, saying, it'll be fine. The doctors supported me. They said, just make sure you take the pills and everything will be OK. I'm so happy. Timothy is strong and healthy, and Genya loves every day she spends with him. And I've told him since birth how beautiful and wonderful life is. Volodya never doubted Genya would be a good mother. Zhenya was giving me so much warmth and tenderness. I understood that any child would be happy with her, and the fact that she has HIV really changes nothing at all. Volodya's love is blind to Zhenya's HIV, but she is aware society as a whole has a long way to go. Well, if I went on a bus and shouted, I have HIV, I'm sure the bus would be empty. I think today that people are actually quite cruel, and I hope that may change in the future, because a person stays a person, whether she has HIV or not. I write songs about my experiences and what I've come across in my life. And I think that I can bring people the message that HIV is not some terrifying illness. Two years ago, our government started to buy treatment from HIV for the money from the national budget. So it's, uh, it's a, you know, a big jump forward, <laughs> not a step, but a jump. But it still uh, needs to be improved very much. There are still almost 100 new registered HIV cases every day in Russia most of them under 25, and many face lack of access to information and treatment. Zhenya and Volodya hope that the situation will improve for future generations and are determined to talk openly with their kids about HIV and drugs. He must definitely know the consequences. Death, it's degradation, loss of health, prisons, hospitals, all that. Be ready. You might go to prison. Yeah, and you may die. And, of course, I think it's important to be honest that he would know that I was chemically dependent. When he was an addict, Volodya would have almost welcomed prison as a way of keeping him away from drugs. In the last months of my addiction, I used to think I'd go to prison. It seemed an ideal outcome. I would be locked in a cell and would have to stop injecting myself. When the sentence is over, I would find a job. But what happened in the end was much better. Volodya and I talk, and men have it too, it's this, you know, this well of life inside, this joy, light, such warmth, it's magic. I think these feelings are great for creativity. I started painting when I was pregnant. I know I did it as a child, and I, I started drawing when I was pregnant. When you're having hepatitis C treatment, you feel just like you're pregnant. 
Well, that's a special case. <laughs> yeah, I got all emotional. <laughs> Do you crave salty things? Salty? I don't know. I don't really have much of an appetite. I think that even when you're around pregnant people, maybe it's contagious, I don't know, but you become quite overwhelmed just by being near them. This is going to sound bad, but the more we talk about children, the less I want them. <laughs> Despite the stigmas of society, these friends have supported each other through addiction and HIV and still believe in love. <laughs> love is a feeling between just two people, not between two religions, not between two diseases. I hope I meet the love of my life. I think I've just been unlucky so far and haven't met the person who'd have been close to me and stayed with me until the end. End of my days. It becomes my need.